Well, good evening and thank you for joining us for Crim 2 News 10 at 10, where we give you more news in less time. I'm Amanda Rowley. Mark is off tonight. Let's get started. The first day of class is three weeks away for Spokane Public Schools, and the board is in the midst of updating its cell phone policy. Tonight, the school board reviewed proposed changes and how it will launch the updated policy this school year. The proposed changes would require all elementary and middle school students to be cell phone free during school hours, mandating students to keep the devices in their pockets or backpacks. High school students would follow similar standards, but phone usage would be allowed during passing periods, lunch hours, before and after school. Superintendent Dr. Adam Swinyard told the board at tonight's meeting administrators support these changes, and he recognizes it will take time for the updated policy to catch on. There will be turbulence. Mm -hmm. like the, we're we're going to be renorming some pretty entrenched habits with kids, and that just doesn't go without some tension. The board is still finalizing the language of the policy, including how to handle repeated mobile uh, device off offenses. It's expected to vote adopting uh, the adopted new policy at the next meeting on August 28th. In an effort to bring you more to every story, we reached out to other school districts to give more context on cell phone policies in the Inland Northwest. At the beginning of the month, the Meade School District sent a letter to parents about a change to their cell phone policy in high schools. Starting this fall, high school students will not be allowed to use cell phones, smartwatches, and other personal mobile devices in class. Students may only use their phones or other devices like earbuds when approved by the teacher for educational purposes. High school students are still allowed to use their cell phones between classes and at lunch. Middle school students can also get special permission by the teacher. Otherwise, they are not allowed to use their phones until the end of the school day. In a letter sent to parents, the Meade School District says, quote, a classroom free of the, of the distractions introduced by personal communication devices will foster a more focused and engaged learning environment. The Coeur d'Alene School District has similar rules for their students, but middle school students are allowed to use their phones before and after school and at lunch. In other news, new tonight, U.S. Marshals and the Stevens County Sheriff's Office are searching for a possibly armed and dangerous man. They say he may be in the Chihuahua area. Nathan Benninger is described as a man with brown hair and blue eyes. Marshals say he's five foot eight, weighing 175 pounds. Now he's wanted for several crimes, including assault in the second degree with a deadly weapon. Anyone with information is asked to call the U.S. Marshals. That number is listed right there at the bottom of your screen. Well, you are never going to believe it, but the National Weather Service says tonight was the last time the sun will set after eight until the end of April. Gosh, can you believe it? That's more than 250 days away. So on that note, let's bring in Chief Meteorologist Jeremy Lagu to tell us more about our forecast this week. Hi, Jeremy. Amanda, there are a few rules we have in the world of weather. <laughs> One is you don't tell people how much daylight we're losing, ah. except for a few times a year. <laughs> and two, you never say how many days it is until we do I'm something. I'm a rule breaker. Like I'm a rule breaker. <laughs> you, you're just like... Hey, you want to <laughs> break the year up into a few different sections? How about 250 until you see a nice late sunset? <laughs> uh, hey, all of your complaints, direct them at aroley at creme.com. No, I'm, I'm kidding. <laughs> Hashtag rule breaker over there. But seriously, when it comes to our overall weather pattern, uh, yeah, we do have to talk about it from time to time. We are losing daylight, daylight is a leading indicator of temperature. So temperatures are a lagging indicator of how much daylight we have. So expect things to get cooler. Right now, we sit in the 70s and a few 60s, 62 in Deer Park and 61 in Sandpoint, but our temperatures are going to plummet again. This is that time of year. Our nights are getting longer, so expect cooler starts to the day. In my personal opinion, this is the best time of year for camping because the nights get so cold and the afternoons get so warm. It's absolutely fantastic. But 
if you're going out this weekend, just know we have a couple of disturbances moving through. The first of which moves through Thursday night. Most of the activity is overnight Thursday into Friday morning. I think we wake up to a few showers light in nature here in eastern Washington and North Idaho. They then work their way off to the north and move out by the middle of the day. As we head into the weekend, it looks a lot like we hang on to all of that sunshine. 87 degrees on Thursday, just 80 on Friday with those morning showers, but by Saturday we're back up near 90 as the warm weather sets in. All right, it'll take that hot weather as long as we can get it, Jeremy. Thank you. Take a look at this video showing someone driving off with a woman's tiny home. Spokane police say the thief broke into the storage facility on East Francis, hitched up the home's trailer and took off. Crime 2 Shannon Mowdy sat down with the owner of the tiny home to talk about this bizarre theft. Spokane's police department is no stranger to property crime, but this is a new one. The theft of a property. You can see what remains of the front porch left behind. It didn't feel real. Um, it still kind of doesn't feel real. Karen Potter got the call Monday morning. A thief drove away with her dream tiny home in tow. It doesn't feel like I've lost an object that I can just go replace. It's felt like losing a loved one. It's felt like a loss of a relationship. A relationship that started 12 years ago one she documented. So this would have been 2018, so I, about a year after I had moved into it. On the home's Instagram page. And something I did not expect about Living Tiny was how much my mental health improved. The dream took a detour during the pandemic, so she parked the home in storage in 2021. Her plans to return to Tiny Living soon hit another hitch when someone hitched up to her trailer inside the storage facility's locked gates. My understanding is that they actually took the iron fence apart, so they were very prepared. Leaving her out of house and home, but not without support. I think that people connect with the idea of how violating it is that somebody would take your home. You know, again, it's not a thing. It's not a an object. It's it's a piece of who you are. The tiny home community is sharing her story as far as Massachusetts with hope her home away comes home to stay. Shannon Mowdy. Spreading the word and then being on the lookout for the vehicle for of course for my home. I think it's pretty it'll be pretty clear that that's my house. Creme 2 News. Now to Night Beat with a quick look at the day's top stories. A woman accused of stabbing a man in downtown Spokane over the weekend made her first appearance in court this afternoon. Spokane police say 21-year-old Lavender Port stabbed a man with his own knife near 2nd and Brown Street. He was taken to the hospital with serious injuries. Port was arrested Monday and is now facing a first-degree assault charge. Her bond was set at $50,000. The Latah County Prosecutor's Office is fighting to keep the murder trial for Brian Koberger in Latah County. Koberger is accused of killing four University of Idaho students almost two years ago. Prosecutors filed the motion to reject a change of venue request on Monday. They argue Koberger's defense attorney has not shown why changing the venue is necessary. Koberger's attorneys requested his trial be moved to Ada County, citing extensive media coverage in Utah County, which they say will make it hard to find an impartial jury. The Washington State Patrol says a 17 year old has died and four other children were injured in a crash near Nespelum. WSP says the 17 year old was driving when she missed a turn and overcorrected, causing the vehicle to roll over. Two 13 year olds were taken to Sacred Heart Medical Center. A 12 year old and three year old were taken to the Cooley Medical Center. WSP says no one in the car was wearing a seatbelt. And that was your night beat. To learn more about these stories, just head over to creme.com. A federal judge in Seattle threw out a jury's verdict in a lawsuit that could have cost Boeing more than $200 million. In May, a federal jury awarded more than $70 million to Sunum, a Kirkland startup that planned to build an electric airplane. That verdict could have been tripled by the judge. Instead, the judge threw out Sunum's award this morning. The judge says there was not enough evidence presented at the trial to prove Boeing stole Sunum's trade secret. 
secrets. In a statement today, Boeing says it's grateful for the judge's decision. New tonight, Alaska Airlines flight attendants voted against a new contract. The union representing them announced today 68% rejected it. The deal was first announced in late June after more than a year and a half of negotiating. At the time, the union called it a record contract. Representatives say they will now work to address flight attendants outstanding concerns and get back to the bargaining table. And that was Creme 2 News 10 at 10, where you get more news in less time.